Each year, Microsoft Research hosts hundreds of influential speakers from around the world, including leading scientists, renowned experts in technology, book authors, and leading academics, and makes videos of these lectures freely available. It is my pleasure to uh, welcome uh, Junling Li uh, as the speaker of uh, this presentation. Junling is uh, from Georgia Tech, and this summer he is uh, supervised by Dine Florencio and uh, me on the project of uh, client side echo cancellation for multi party audio conferencing. Uh, so here's uh, Junling. Hi, thank you for the introduction. <coughs> Good afternoon, everyone. The topic of my talk is client-side echo cancellation for multi-party audio conferencing. This is my summer internship project with Delay and Li Wei from CCS Group. The outline of my talk is, first I will talk about the popular multi-party audio conferencing architecture, then introduce Yes, this way to turn off this speaker mic. All right, you can continue. Okay. Uh, first, I will talk about some popular multi party audio conferencing architecture and then introduce a new architecture which potentially will reduce the bandwidth and the computation requirement. Which will reduce the computation, <coughs> bandwidth and the computa computation requirement. But this architecture will introduce the echo. So how to remove this echo is a major task of this talk. Then we will present some subjective tests and results, and talk about the practical issues and conclude this talk. Uh, the first architecture we talk about is full mesh structure. In this structure, any two of the client will direct any communication with each other. The advantage of this, <coughs> of this structure is higher audio quality, less delay, because this is a tandem-free structure, only one encoding and a decoding involved. The disadvantage of this architecture is high bandwidth consumption and uh, computation load at the end point. Uh, for example, this, <coughs> this uh, structure, this figure, each client needs three upload and download bandwidths and three decoding. So to reduce the bandwidths and the computation at the end point, an MCU-based uh, structure is introduced. The diagram is this. There has three active speaker and one listener. Uh, each speaker sends his speech to MCU, and the MCU generates a mixed speech, specific mixed speech for each, uh, for each client, such as for A, <coughs> the MCU will mix C and D and send it to A. So the advantage of this architecture, uh, for the endpoint, only one upload and download bandwidth and one decoding is needed. But the problem of this architecture is the bandwidth and the computation requirement at the MCU is very high. In this example, three download for upload bandwidth, three decoding, four mixing, and four encoding is needed at MCU. So reduce, to reduce the bandwidth and the computation requirement at MCU, we introduce a new MCU-based structure. Similar as before, every client sends his speech to MCU, but MCU will generate a common mixed speech and send it to everyone, which include all the speech from every client. So in this structure, same with 
the traditional MCU-based structure, only one upload, the download, and the one decoding is needed at the end point. Also at the MCU, because the MCU will send a common signal to every client, so potentially broadcast can be used. If broadcast used, the upload bandwidth is only one upload. Another advantage of this structure is MCU only need to do one mixing and one encoding. So the bandwidth and the computation requirement at MCU both will be reduced. <clears throat> but uh, the problem of this structure is the download speech include all the speech from everybody. So the, when the client received the download stream, he need to remove himself speech first before playback. This is an echo. So this introduced the client side echo cancellation problem. This is a major work of this, this talk. This table briefly compares these three structures. As we talked before, the proposed MCU based structure greatly reduces the bandwidth and the computation requirement, both at the endpoint and the MCU if broadcast used. Another point I want to mention is for the traditional MCU based structure, <clears throat> it relies on a reliable voice activity detection or speaker selection algorithm to reduce the bandwidth and the computation at MCU. But for a propos <coughs> proposed MCU based structure, since only one upload if broadcast used and one mixing, one encoding, whatever how many active speakers, so we may <coughs> relax the voice activity detection algorithm. So how to implement the proposed MCU based architecture? This is a diagram. Each client sends his speech to MCU. The blue box is MCU. MCU first decode all the speech and mix together and encode, and then send it to every client. The red box is one of the client. <coughs> before, after decoding the download stream, before playback, he needs to remove himself. So this yellow box is a major part of this work. Before we talk about the how to <coughs> remove this echo, we first look at the Kodak itself. In this system, we used the IQT G.722.1 audio Kodak. The input audio first goes through MLT transform. The MLT transform is a modified DCT transform. The MLT coefficients are coded region by region. Each region includes 20 coefficients and totally 14 regions for each frame. Um, for, to, for each region, the region power will be quantized, compute, quantized, and coding. Then the MLT coefficients coefficients will be normalized by the quantized region power. And then the normalized MLT coefficient will be scalar quantized. <coughs> the quantized step size is decided by this category information. This information is decided by region power, the, the power of each region. So totally there has eight categories as shown in this table. Different category has different uh, quantization step size. So, before we talk about the our proposed uh, measure, we first look at three simple solutions. This is the most uh, lazy solution, just directly <coughs> subtract the original speech. So, this, yeah. The pipes began to rust well new. Open the crates, but don't break the glass. So by this lazy solution, a lot of echo remain. 
This is another simple solution. We subtract the single right before this mixing. So this A single, we subtract this single. The pipe began to rust well new. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. Compare with solution one, the echo reduced, but still has a lot of echo. This is another simple solution. <coughs> so the basic idea out here, we try to simulate the, the same process. The echo goes through encoding, decoding, and encoding, decoding. So before subtraction, we also make this original speech go through to encoding and decoding and then subtract. The pipe began to rust well new. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. OK, there still has some echo remain. So the problem is this encoder and this encoder not exactly the same thing. The quantization parameters in this two encoder is different. Because as we mentioned before, the parameter, the quantization parameter in the encoder is depends on the input speech. For this encoder, the input speech is A plus B, and here the encoder speech is A. So this will make the <coughs> quantization parameters in this two encoder is different. So this also trigger our first proposed measure. So to make this <coughs> to make this two encoder exactly the same thing, we will enforce the quantization parameters used in this encoder the same way as this encoder. <coughs> uh, since the the <coughs> quantization parameters used in this encoder, uh, all the quantization parameters also embedded in this uh, uh, stream. So the decoder can be can recover all the quantization parameters. So this encoder needn't go to this encoder get the parameter. They can get the param parameter directly from this decoder. This decoder is also in the client side. So there has no additional cost. It began to rust well new. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. So from this speech, we can tell two things. First, the echo is gone. We removed the echo. Another thing is there has some artifacts in the speech. So how this happened? We take a quick look mathematically. <coughs> We assume the quantization step is QS, and the A quantized with KA plus some quantization error EA, B quantized with KB with some quantization error EB. So after some simple math, we get these final results. So the, the final distortion for B is like this. This equation tells us uh, two things. First, uh, the distortion includes nothing about A. So this is the reason why the echo gone. There is no A in the final results. Another thing is sometimes there, will, there may have a big distortion, such as when EB is very small and the quantization step is very big. This distortion may be very big. So mostly the artifacts from here. Uh, this one? This one? Uh, <clears throat> yeah. Because when here we, we need to encode the A plus B together, right? This uh, in th here we assume we individually encode A and B with this encoder. So A and B will quantize it like this. So when we quantize A plus B, the output will like this, Ka plus Kb times Qs, and the, these two arrows will also will be quantized. If these two arrows 
the sum of these two SO is larger than half of the quantization steps, there will be another, the quantized output will not equal to K plus KB. So <clears throat> from this equation, we, we get uh, the two conclusions, as we said. There has uh, nothing about A, so no echo. And uh, the distortion may be very large sometimes. So this is a reason there has some artifacts. So to remove the echo, and at the same time, we try to reduce the artifacts, we proposed another solution. <clears throat> uh, in, the, in the previous solution, we always try to simulate the same process the echo goes through by to encode, decode, encode, decode, and then subtract the echo from the mixed speech. And here, uh, <clears throat> we don't explicitly subtract the echo. We directly estimate the desired speech B by giving this quantized A plus B and this A itself. So mathematically, this problem can be formulated as we given quantized A plus B and A to estimate B. Uh, if we assume we, the PDF function of B is FB and the best estimation for B to minimize the mean square error is a condition mean, this is a well-known clue. <coughs> so, Essentially, these two conditions tell us the possible region for B. And with the <coughs> PDF function of B, we can easily get the best estimation about B. But here, we need to know the PDF function of B. This is unknown. We need to estimate this. So we assume all the 20 MLT coefficients in the same region is independent, identical Gaussian distribution with zero mean and uh, variance sigma square. Then the problem tends to estimate the, this variance sigma square. This can be estimated like this. So in summary, we want to, we want to lower this B. So we need to lower FB. To get FB, we need this B. So essentially, we can solve this problem by jointly solve the two equations. Of course, the first equation, this equation, include the 20 components because this B and A is a 20 dimension vector. So here we use, use an iterative procedure to estimate this B and uh, sigma square. First, initialize the B. This is just the results of the proposed measure one. And then iteratively, estimate the sigma square and B. But there has a special case. For B, if B is small enough, such, as, <coughs> such that the quantized A plus B is equal to quantized A, then we make this B zero to avoid some residual echoes. So this is the results. The pipe began to rust well new. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. So, <clears throat> compare with the, the results from solution one. The pipe began to rust well new. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. So we can see <clears throat> the results of solution one has some artifacts, but the results of solution B greatly reduce the artifacts. But we can see there still has some artifacts, but greatly reduced. And this is a spectrogram of these two output speech. And in, in, this, in this figure, we can see there has some isolated big coefficients like this, this, and there has something like this. Mostly the artifacts is from this kind of place. But with the proposed measure B, this kind of isolated coefficient greatly reduced, and the artifacts also greatly reduced. <clears throat> Next, we try to further improve the performance of this, uh, this measure. 
Here we introdu <coughs> introduced another function, adaptive noise filling after echo cancellation. Uh, noise filling is also a component in the original G.722.1 Kodak. Uh, but, but the original noise fill uh, algorithm is based on the, is for the quantized single itself. But here we want to fill noise for the single signal after this echo cancellation. So the original noise fill algorithm may not directly apply in our case. Before we look, <coughs> discuss our proposed noise field algorithm, we first look at the original noise field algorithm. As we already say, this is a G.722.1 audio dock. And for this scalar quantization, <coughs> there has a category information to decide the quantization steps. Totally, there has eight categories. With a large category, the quantization steps is also large. So <clears throat> for this kind of large, large category, the quantization steps is too large, make many coefficients quantized to zero. This is the reason why we need to fill some noise. To fill noise, we need to answer two questions. Where to fill noise and how much noise to fill? As we already mentioned, in the original G.722.1 Kodak, the noise field will be for category 7 because there has no any transmission, no coding. Another is for category 5 and 6 because the quantization step is too, too large, make many coefficients quantized to zero. So we need to fill some noise. So <clears throat> about how much noise to fill is based on the quantization step size. Because the zero coefficient is because there has a big quantization step. For our proposed noise field algorithm, we still need to answer these two questions, where to fill noise and how much noise to fill. But the answer for these two questions may be different with the original noise field. For the first question, where to fill noise, uh, to answer this question, we need to to know how the quantization steps correlated with the desired speech. Because we want to fill noise for the desired speech, not the quantized mixed speech itself. <coughs> if the desired speech, uh, in the previous uh, figure, the desired speech means the B singular. If the desired speech is dominant in the region compared with the echo speech, that means the quantization steps is mainly depends on this desired speech. So the same noise field scheme can be used at here. That means we fill noise for category five, six, and seven. If the desired speech is comparable with the echo speech, <coughs> so in this case, the quantization steps is a little, we can imagine is a little bigger than the <coughs> quantization steps for the desired speech itself, but not too big. So we extend this noise field to two more category. That means from three to seven. If the echo speech is dominant in this region, that means the desired speech is very small and the, the quantization steps they may much bigger than the desired speech. In this case, we fill noise for every region regardless the quantization category. The other question for how much noise to how much noise to fill. In the original algorithm, <coughs> the noise depends on the quantization steps. But here the noise is not only depends on the quantization steps, also depends on the quantized energy of the desired singular itself, not the mixed singular. So <coughs> the noise feel like this is a minimum of F1 and F2. F1 is a, is a function of quantization step, is the same with the original G.722.1 Kodak. And uh, F2 is a leading function of the energy of the desired speech. 
<coughs> this this can be computed from the estimate MLT coefficient because we also we already get the MLT coefficient for B. And for some special case, if this <coughs> quantized this quantized energy is zero, we may need some interpolation from the time domain and the frequency domain neighbors. Okay, here is the results. The pipe began to rust while new. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. Compare with the result Lewis filling case. The pipe began to rust while new. Open the crate, but don't break the glass. You may can't tell the difference. But we claim there has, with the Lewis field, the artifacts slightly reduced. <coughs> okay, let's go back. <coughs> from the, this is a spectrogram. From this spectrogram, we also can see something, such as like, like this kind of regions, with some Lewis field, make this, this. Isolated coefficient, not isolated anymore. <clears throat> so make this more smooth, like. So, <clears throat> um, let's talk about the subjective, subjective test we did. <clears throat> uh, to evaluate the performance of the proposed algorithm, we use a category, absolute category rating, with mean opinion score. This is a standard test recommended by ITUT. The test data used is from a real four-person audio conference. And to simulate the real communication system and the masking effect, the test file generated like this. For each client, we generate a sterile file. The the original speech of the client is put in the left channel, and the processed speech of all the other client with 200 milliseconds delay put in the right channel. So in this setting, we try to simulate the masking effect. OK, this is the test results. <clears throat> we test three methods. The simple measure two we mentioned before, and the proposed measure one and measure two, and compare with the traditional MCU based measure, and another extreme case without any coding. So this is the most score. The difference between our proposed measure with the traditional MCU based measure is about 0.2. There has some example, maybe you can hear. The left channel is uh, the left channel. Effect. We ask the user to listen to the right channel only. And read, read the right channel only. Yeah. So we assume that the left channel is the audio that's present in the local site. <coughs> so from here, you may didn't hear uh, not some echoes because for real, for this uh, test sentence, there has uh, no much concurrent uh, speaker. Every speaker kind of speak uh, at a different time. So <clears throat> as the previous results, we say this mirror will have a lot of remaining echoes. I've been there three times. Wow. So obviously, um, yeah, going back. right. And I would go there again, certainly. OK. I've been there three times. Wow. So um, yeah, back. right. And I would go there again, certainly. OK. I've been there three times. Wow. So um, yeah, back. right. And I would go there again, certainly. OK. I've been there three times. Wow. 
So obviously, you um, yeah, and keep going back. Right, and I would go there again, certainly. Okay. So from this, uh, <coughs> these files, we can we can see the results of a pro proposed measure two is similar with the uh, traditional MCU based measures. There's uh, as another example. <laughs> Where did you to go? Oh, did yeah. you have to pick three places? Yeah. yeah. What well, if we all agreed one. on this, the first one? Hey, Greg. If you listen very carefully, there, there has some echo. Where did you to go? Oh, did yeah. you have to pick three places? Yeah. yeah. What well, if we all agreed one. on this, the first one? Hey, Greg. Where did go? Oh, did yeah. you have to pick three places? Yeah. yeah. What if well, we, we all agreed one. on this, the first one? Hey, Greg. Yeah. Oh, did yeah. you have to pick three places? Yeah. yeah. What if well, we, we all agreed one. on this, the first one? Hey, Greg. Yeah. Where did it go? Oh, did yeah. you have to pick three places? Yeah. <clears throat> What so if we, we all got agreed one? on this, the first one? Hey, Greg. And uh, actually, <coughs> the results between these two, <coughs> the results of this measure has much less artifacts than this measure. Seems uh, we can't tell very clearly from this, this file. But if you listen, maybe some, it's not loud enough or something. <coughs> And this table show a detailed results for different coding rate, 16 kilobits, 24, and 32. <clears throat> the basic conclusion is the same with here. The traditional MCU-based measure is the best, and this is a proposed measure two, and this is measure one, and this is a simple measure. But there has some, something unexpected at this point such as for, for proposed measure two, at 32 kilobits, the, the most score even <coughs> smaller than this, 16 kilobits and 24. And for the traditional MCU-based measure, the 24 kilobits is worse than 16. But this, this is something we don't expect. It. The possible reason for this, one reason is maybe is uh, testing data is uh, uh, not many enough. Uh, right now, we, in the database, we include four sentences for different measures. How many and, participants do you have? Uh, uh, four different sentences, oh, and uh, 30. 30, 30 people listen to the results. What is the standard deviation of those four scores? Uh, it's around one. Well, well because we have only discrete choices. Yeah. <coughs> oh, okay. So it's kind of the. It's all yeah, So one 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 possible reason is the test data is not many enough. Only four sentences included in the database, and only thirty person do the test right now. But each person only test half of the data, only listen to half of the data. <clears throat> so we, we are still waiting for more tests to do this test. And uh, another reason I, I can say maybe, because the, this speech is from the real com communication, and there has many background noise, especially for this right channel. He mixed uh, three different persons. So the background noise will add together. And when the background noise is too big, maybe the difference between different rate not very clear. <coughs> this is the results of current stage. Okay. Next we talk about the pra <coughs> practical issues. Because to make this uh, system really practical, we need to consider packet not packet jitter and uh, packet loss. <coughs> uh, traditionally, for packet jitter, audio handler is used to stretch or compress the speech from different client. 
and the packet loss may happen on the upload link from client to MCU or the download link from MCU to client. To handle the packet loss, normally packet loss concealment algorithm will be used at the decoder, which can work on the time domain or the frequency domain. But here, one more problem is the packet jitter and the packet loss both will impact on the client side echo cancellation. This is a solution, tentative solution. <coughs> Uh, for each client, <coughs> send his speed to MCU. In this link, may have packet loss or some delay jitter. So in the MCU, the packet loss concealment and the audio handler will work here to <coughs> handle the packet loss and the jitter. So <coughs> at the client side, before echo cancellation, we also need to do the same thing for this. Do the same thing the MCU do to make this single and the single and this single is the same, exactly the same. <coughs> so there, here we need some side information from MCU. We need some information about uh, MCU, how to do this uh, packet loss concealment, uh, or what uh, audio cannot do to this speech. If himself didn't lost or didn't have jitter, so there has nothing to do. But if MCU do something for this client speech, at the client side, he need to do the same thing before the echo cancellation. And another, if the, if the package loss on the download link from the MCU to the client, so the package loss concealment will done here. <coughs> we, we do this package loss concealment after echo cancellation, not on this side. Didn't do this package loss concealment on the download the speech, mix the speech, we do this on the echo cancellation of speech. Also, the packet loss concealment can be done in time domain or frequency domain. So to conclude my talk, <coughs> in this summer, we first introduced a new multi-party audio conferencing structure. This structure potentially can reduce the bandwidth and the computation requirements at both the endpoint and the MCU. To make this structure exactly work, we propose a client-side echo cancellation algorithm. As the future work, we, we may handle the echo, packet loss, and jitter together to make the whole system practic. Another interesting topic is extension the proposed client-side echo cancellation algorithm for different speech audio codec maybe CALP-based uh, CODOC or something else. This is the end of my talk. Thanks for coming. <laughs>